Hello, everyone. Welcome to yet another episode of 51 Stories of Emotional Wellbeing with Emotional Ability Resources. Today, I have with me Shweta Rai, a bright and dynamic young lady who is the lead chief academic officer at Vedanti. Welcome to the show, Shweta. Uh, hi, Pragati. So I'll just correct that I am the team lead at chief academic officers, a uh, okay. chief, okay? So uh, yeah, uh, thank you Pragati for having me here. And it's an absolute privilege and delight to be here today. Great. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey as a young child, and uh, how is it that you are what you are today? Yeah, Pragati, so my journey right from childhood till today has lots of ups and downs. And I would really like to share so that someone else would get something out of this and maybe, uh, you know, it will help them out. So as a child, I was in a joint family and it was a nice cheerful setup with a lot of cheerleaders around. So like uh, be it my grandparents or my parents, so it was a happy family, I would say. And had a happy and humble family. And suddenly what happened that my father got a medical ailment. He had a health issue. And, and that happened when I was just in grade two. So he had this ankylosing spondylitis and he was told that a time will come when, you know, he will be, all the, uh, you know, organs of his body will be affected and he will not be able to walk and all. And we were too young to understand that then. And my father was kind of person, he took even that in high spirits. He used to say that, you know, this is something very rare very less people used to have. Even he never made us feel that, you know, some tough times are coming on our way. And everything was going on and slowly the joint family set up, you know, splitted. We uh, moved into a nuclear setup and day by day, my father was falling sick. But he was very clear that education of my children is the top priority. He had a job. He had a job in um, sales, Steel Authority of India Limited, which was a decent paying job. But by the time we reached, you know, in the high school, uh, he had to take a medical unfit. So there was no job and the compensation was there, but it wasn't great. So he had to make some tough decisions for our career, for our studies. We were three siblings. We are three. And I had an elder brother and a younger brother. So, of course, um, boys, uh, you know, their uh, education is given the priority. I will not complain. My parents have given me a lot. No complaint. I can understand their situation. So my father, who always pushed me towards studies, towards making high goals, not to get deviated by, you know, anything that a child might get deviated to. He said to me one day that, see, uh, because I, I took biology and he said that, see, uh, I might not be able to, you know, pay for your medical career. It's very expensive. So uh, uh, maybe you have to do something else. I was like, fine. But somewhere inside, I was deeply affected. I was a bright student. I had a set of friends who were all bright and brilliant. And somewhere I could foresee that now I am not moving along with my friends. They are going to this tutorial, that tutorial for, you know, preparing for their competitive exams. But I am not going Internally, somewhere it was affecting me, but externally, I was not talking about it with anyone. Now, where I went wrong is, I, or maybe because I was not capable enough, 
there was no mentor in life that whatever resources i had then they were enough first of all i should have some clear goals but i had no goals then i felt devastated internally and that took toll on my 12th grade results i did not study at all pragati i was unhappy i was unhappy inside i was not studying any day of my life and i ended up getting a compartment what you can call as supplementary in my physics in 12 and again i was shattered i i was a student who never failed and i was into a situation that how will i fail how will i face people nobody believed nobody believed uh, that this is going to happen and it was not a shock for me i knew i did not write anything in the examination it would have been a miracle had i passed that exam so but once again my parents they did not get angry on that something that was something really good about them they got sad they were there with me and they said no problem you prepare for this exam we'll see what to do but i thought that it was all dark for me now there's nothing left for me and post that i have given that exam i took admission in a nearby college it's a degree college and this college in this college which was a girls college prior to this i was in a total co education setup pragati so while i joined this college i thought that i had no aspirations basically no aspirations at all i thought some monotony is going to happen i'll be on a regular route of taking degrees like other girls of my family so i haven't seen any other working girl before me in my family i could have been the first one probably so i thought that even my life is going to be like you know every one else i'll be taking some degrees might be i'll be married off to someone i wasn't thinking a lot but in this college my lecturers and the atmosphere of the college you know all girls atmosphere a different kind of carefree atmosphere has brought a new spirit in me and still i wasn't thinking that where am i going but somewhere i became happy pragati i was not happy for years i was not happy i would say at least from past 3 to 4 years where i could see that you know financially we are not doing good we are in trouble that is not well so a light of happiness entered in my life in this college and along with all other friends whom i made here i started learning once again and in my very first year i just got some 64 percent and i don't know what actually happened that i started working very hard i would say that my professors my lecturers they appreciated me a lot i was looking for appreciation and i started performing well and i topped my class sort of topped my class and next move was to decide what's going to be next after this graduation so i thought that let me do something called biotechnology because i took microbiology in my graduation and many of the girls were doing biotechnology once again the finances became the roadblock the fee was very high and nobody was there to guide you know that there are certain colleges in country where you can you can give entrances and the fee is very nominal there was absolutely no awareness no information lack of information so then my father who's who was a very good friend of mine you know he with his ill health severe ill health he had a good network of people he started consulting people you know what should my daughter study and then he said to me see you study core science <coughs> he said to me that you take anything in core science 
because even if I will try to gather some fund and maybe I'll send you to biotechnology, I'm not sure what your career will be. And in the kind of family setup we were, it was important for him to marry off her daughter in a family. So he said, I don't know in which city I'll marry you off. So study something that will be useful for you. So I also started talking to myself, Pradipi. For the first time, I would say in this in, in the whole journey, I sat and I thought, okay, what I'm going to do with my career. So I felt that I have done a lot of things which were not challenging. This time I'm going to do something which is really challenging. I'll take chemistry because my scores were not great in chemistry. Okay. I'm not going to do anything easy. Taking biotechnology would have been easier. I was performing well in other subjects. And I, this time I took this challenge. I secured a seat just out of 10 seats. I secured one in the MSc chemistry batch. And once again, with full spirit, I started studying. It was very difficult to, you know, pass that phase. But I worked hard, Pragati, and I got first rank in my college and sixth rank in state. And that was, you know, a bright light in my life. Ki bhai, kuch acha ho hai life mein. <laughs> Or Pragati, one thing that I missed out, I even started taking tuition. Mm -hmm. While I was in BSc. And that happened not to support my family, but eventually it helped. It happened likewise. I did not know that I have a love for teaching. Uh -huh. I did not know. I just, you know, happened to meet a family, neighbors, and their mother was not able to support the child with the homeworks and all. I said, you send to me, you send her to me. I'll help her with her homework. And Pragati, within a month, I had 14 to 15 children in my home. Wow. And I started making money. And I was not using that money. That also was a pattern of my life that later I changed. Mm -hmm. That money I used to, uh, you know, it goes to my mother and it was actually required to us. So it was required for us. It has helped us in a way. But yes, by, while I was in MSc, my father said, you are not going to take tuitions. You have to focus. So that tuitions was not that it was a family requirement. I myself, have volunteered and I started taking it. Now, after doing MSc, I had few offers to, you know, join as a teacher in some of the schools, but my father said, no, I want you to take up the, this beard course. Mm -hmm. And I was against it. I said, what is beard? I once again, I felt that he's making me do something really boring. He said, listen, even if you will go to a rural place in a village in India, this is going to help you out. I did not understand it, but he forced me to prepare. <laughs> he used to make me sit beside him. He used to lay down on the bed because he became bedridden by then. So I started preparing. And Pragati, there also in the entrance exam, I got 25th rank. In the so again, I was wowed. Okay, what's happening in my life? <laughs> so... I took up this course and it was the best decision of my life. I've learned a lot. It's like um, a beard is like a mini MBA course meant for teachers. You study psychology, you study a lot about education, you study a lot of things and you do a lot of activities. So to any, you know, budding teacher, please do take up this course. It's going to help you a lot. And also I understood Pragati that I enjoy learning. I enjoy learning. All right, so I completed my BA. There were certain opportunities. I joined in one of the schools and somehow I did not like it. Uh, I did not like working there. And for a few, you know, uh, I would say days or a month, I felt that even this is not working out for me. Will I not be able to teach in a school? And the college from where I studied, one day I 
got a call from there that we want you to join us as a lecturer. I felt, will I be able to do it? Though I have completed my MSc and now I have done BA also, but you know, passing an exam and able to teach that grade are two different things. Once again, I spoke with, you know, to myself inside my head, I can't, you cannot give up like this. You have to give it a try. And I went there, I accepted the appointment letter and I started preparing for it. And I went, you know, more than I studied for my exams, I started preparing for teaching these degree classes. And when I started teaching and I could see, you know, that amazement, that light in the eyes of the students, I patted myself. I was like, wow, I am able to do it. I, I can do it. And it went on very well. My student loved me. My own lecturers, my teachers who taught me once, now they were my colleagues. They praised me a lot. And meanwhile, uh, you know, I got married also. So when I got married, I came to Hyderabad and I started looking for a job and I joined a school. And in this school again, Pragati, I was loved like anything. There were many other people who joined along with me. I did not see them enjoying their work the way I was enjoying. So one thing that I understood about me that every little task that was assigned to me, I did it with complete dedication. It was not just teaching, whatever, because when you are a school teacher, you are given other tasks also. And I saw few of my friends over there, they used to crib about those things. But I, I had full spirits. I'll tell you, I would like to share that I was given a responsibility to look after the meeting rooms along with a senior teacher. And I remember whenever there were meetings, I used to go, you know, running. I was young, energetic. I used to go to running to my, uh, you know, other senior. And I would say, chalo, chalo, let's go. We have to look after the meeting room. He was like, why are you so excited to look after the meeting room? I said, no, I want everything to be in place. Okay, this should be that, uh, you know, we, the cover should be in place before our chairman is there, before our principal is there. It's our responsibility. Let's go and check that. The tables uh, shouldn't be dusty and all. And uh, I realized later that my dad's spirit has brought the admiration from everyone. And I did a lot of innovative and creative things over there. I never hesitated to ask for help, Pragati. Mm -hmm. And what was the result? The result was in this school after working for two years, when I conceived my first child and when I delivered my baby, I got so much support. My chairman himself for the very first time created an opportunity for me that you come, take your lectures and go back home. And out of eight hours job, I had to work only for three and three and a half hours. Such a flexibility in a private school setup. And then I, you know, when you are the first one who will get such a facility and no one else has got, again, there will be some issues with others. So I started, you know, and I got full salary. I got the increments also. So then again, I decided that, you know, because I have got this opportunity, I am not going to make, you know, my chairman or anybody, I'm not going to let them down. And I'm going to give my 200% to this job. And I cannot describe, Pragati, how I performed in those two years in the school. Not just that I did teaching, I did a lot of innovative and creative activities. Like I would say, wherever I go, I have heard admiration. People speak about me. Even after I left that, uh, that school, for many years, whoever used to you know, come in my contact, they say, oh, people talk about you. 
used to feel deep inside oh wow so i was able to do you know i had done justice and i found lot of good people pradeep in my life like i would say the chairman of the school where i work i found father figure over there the professors and lecturers of my college when i was lost the admiration that i got from them it became it was life changing for me now next move that i did pragati was moving from school almost a decade back to an online teaching you know setup when rarely in fact i haven't heard of this i just uh, you know saw an opening and uh, i had to transition from my school somewhere i was feeling that the school has allowed me to work for two years part time and now the time has come that i should be with them for full full time and i have to move I, am i doing something wrong so i just went to the chairman mr koteshwar rao i call him my second father he is no more so i went to him and i said sir i have got this opportunity and uh, i am in a dilemma i owe so much to you you have given this opportunity to me that i was able to work with a little child so without your permission i am not going to move so he said then the chweta i can't stop you from grow from growing you can go i took his permission and i moved on to this completely new world of teaching online there also i just went as a teacher pragati but i started participating in a lot of things i got again lot of admiration from the different you know cities schools we connected but somehow this setup or this online organization could not succeed because a decade ago internet was not that great the way the things have progressed in these past tens year in 2011 and 12 it was not likewise except few cities in india i felt that i have somewhere wasted two years of my life two years i spent over there with lots of ups and downs apart from it in personal life also pragati there were lot of ups and downs this was happening the work was going on i i was married into uh, you know in a good family but my mother in law uh, but a bit traditional family so my and my mother in law also had some health issues and there was a time when the responsibility came on me that i have to look after her and i did not know that how am i going to you know take up this responsibility she was completely bedridden so i have to i had to look after her and i don't know that how shall i you know continue with my work and uh, to look after her and that time the payment was also not we were quite early in our careers pragati so the payment was not so high that you know we can afford something some facility some caretaker but then once again i spoke to myself how to address this challenge because working was required me and my husband we both were running the family and if i will stop working because i had to look after her it's not going to work and maybe i'll not be able to do justice also to that role because looking after an elderly person throughout the day is not an easy task and even i had a child who was 4 years old then so then i decided that okay maybe that i am going to spend more than 60% of my salary for a help who will look after my mother in law but i'll be able to continue with my job i'll have some money in my hand and there will not be a break in my career so it was a big decision and paying a big amount 
we got a help for my mother in law and this advice i want to give to all the women all working women who are new in their careers please take out some money for support please don't crush yourself under the burden because eventually you will grow in your career eventually your payment your salary part will increase the journey is long so for see that and for yourself and for any other such challenges take wise decisions so i have taken that decision and it wasn't uh, you know uh, again uh, we have we were spending but pragati that helped me big time i could say my mother in law was with me till last year so again big seven to eight years she was taken care of she was being taken care of very well there was no compromise in her career her sorry her care because we had hired someone for her along with that i was able to pursue my career and things were smooth so I, I, i think this is a very pertinent point you brought to the forefront you know a lot of times you know cost versus value the point is the cost was very high but it did value addition to you as a human being you know right. maybe at that point giving 60% of salary would have pinched and i can think of it because you know with growing up uh, with a young child in the house and with needs in the house and 60% you give away it pinches like nothing but you have loans as a, as a new professional you are, you are excited to have your own home yes we had home loan we had a car loan imagine yes so we were we were like completely run off yes. everything yeah. we were having no savings but fine we somehow sustained And, and you know that bit of courage, and I'm so glad you brought that point. You know, with this series, that's what the point was: that our emotional well-being is in our hands. Now, you had a lot of situations in life where you could have been bitter, but sometimes the way to overcome patriarchy is, you know, you understand that yes, this is not going to work in my favor. You were desolate. All that happened is your performance went down. So when you started looking for opportunities. in a so called bad scenario or a second best choice see how you have grown you know and thank you for sharing that because i think that's what we are trying to do through these series you know that our emotional well being is in our hands identify that unique uh, emotional ability resource like just that will to give it my best maybe i never thought i would be a teacher where i thought i would be a doctor but i'll still do my best and that appreciation comes you know either you're rewarded instantly or you are rewarded throughout your life like you have shared you know the chairperson could easily have given you grief that hello i have done so much for you and now you want to take off right so but we you. find good people we uh-huh. get good people in our lives it's but we have to go and speak our heart maybe i would have not spoken with him maybe i would have sent a simple resignation letter but that would have pinched me throughout my life pragati he is that person who made me feel so special who had spoken you know many a times his words you know they are still there in my i i, I said right that i used to call him that he is my second father only mm-hmm. so this is one part of uh, life pragati which is the professional part but there is another story also that i would say the personal story mm-hmm. so though i was running okay i was working i was earning but deep inside i was not a happy person mm-hmm. also professionally i was happy personally i was not happy pragati i realized pragati that i was not doing anything for my personal happiness job was bringing a happiness i was able to contribute to the family that circle was there that admiration was there but deep inside something was not going great there was a different kind of stress and what i have seen pragati that this pattern was coming from the childhood i wasn't doing anything for me i was never a demanding child 
because i understood quite early in my life that you know i cannot demand there are limitations in life we uh, i was able to get my education that itself was a big deal so after that even after i got the job i started earning i never did anything for my personal happiness and somewhere deep inside you know i was getting burdened i was unhappy deep inside so at a point in my life when the stress was very high i took a support i consulted a psychologist and i spoke about my grief i said that there are lot of things around me and somewhere i am not happy by then i was mother of two kids and if you are a mother of two children and you are not happy how will you raise happy kids who will you raise you know how will you have a happy family life so i spoke about spoke uh, about my grief to her and she said that you are not appreciating yourself though lot of good things are happening to you you are not appreciating yourself appreciate yourself tell yourself that you are doing great things love yourself and the people around you and if you are not unhappy if you are not happy with them you are unhappy with them don't think inside that the problem is in you and it is not in those people he said clearly you don't have any problem you are absolutely fine and admire yourself tell yourself that shweta you are an achiever you are doing amazingly well and pragati from there i started spending on myself thinking about myself that you know i should be in good shape i should take care of my health i was not thinking about any of these pragati you know somewhere the traditional thing or what i have seen growing up you know the uh, other girls of my family they are uh, they have uh, got the education and they had their kids and they are living in the traditional family setup so i was also taking that along uh, along uh, you know along with all this but then i brought a major shift in my life i completely changed the way i lived every day of my life pragati i started going to gym to work out i started buying different kinds of clothes for me i did a lot of mistakes also there because as a child i had no luxury of buying a lot of things for me and i started learning from my mistake i was like okay fine and many a times there is a guilt also when i overspend that you know i should help someone i do that that helps me that calms me that's uh that somewhere you know uh, is a heal when i am able to help someone i have dedicated a sum that whatever i am earning some some part should go in helping out someone but yes there is a chunk that is meant for me savings are there for kids future and for family for everything but yes i am very important and i have to keep myself happy and that is another factor pragati that helped me a lot i can say that i am a happy person today i would say 6 years ago or 5 years ago i was not a happy person professionally i was happy outwardly i was happy if a neighbor would see if a friend would see if a colleague would see i was a very cheerful person people 
turn to me people come to me many women many female friends come to me and they ask me that i have done my btech i have done my mba and i'm not able to pursue my career ahead help me out shweta and somewhere i am able to help people pragati but i was not helping myself so i took the help i took the help and i have evolved greatly i was extremely agreeable person my father asked me for something i agreed my mother asked me for something i agreed my mother in law my father in law my husband i was going on in this agreeable mode to the extent even somewhere in my professional life i was over agreeing type i changed this person i changed this person i i have i have understood that i am not supposed to agree to everything and if i get disagree and my disagreement hurts someone at personal level or at professional level that's fine i have to disagree where i should and i have to say no so that's another thing pragati that has helped me and now also i am learning i told you once that pragati i am not i will not say that i am a person who is emotionally balanced but definitely i am a more mature person now i have understood things that what i want and i have also understood one thing about me pragati that i am not afraid of challenges i am not afraid of bad times pragati i have seen a fighter father who has sailed us through very tough time his ill health doesn't have little effect also on our personality on our cheerfulness be it me or my brothers or even my mother we used to have laughter every day in our lives when he was sick and that was him that was him who was responsible for that happiness so i have you know imbibed that it's very much in me that be it any tough time pragati i know that i'll be sail through that i'll be able to do that so in our industry as there were recent i've just told you you know the ups and downs are going some of our friends are parting away so i speak with them and i tell them that you know good times will come it's temporary it's temporary and this phase will be over and your knowledge your learning will help you always so yes pragati i think i've spoken a lot i i think you know this journey of yours will resonate with a lot of people because especially in our country lot of people have to make way not just before marriage you know there may be loving parents they may be unsupportive parents but you were lucky that you found laughter but a lot of girls also get a lot of pressure you're criminalized if you just want to study at least with laughter it was better yet all through it happens with marriage with everything some things are spoken about and not spoken about but that spirit you know that spirit and that self appreciation no one can take away i think that message was really required and we often you know see a successful person like we may see successful shweta and we like wow everyone must have been nice and hunky dory and some sense of humor but we don't realize that sometimes you know for that sense of humor also to be there it's a choice we make and that can only come from a zone of self appreciation thank you for putting it out so wonderfully you know because otherwise self appreciation is like a nice concept with psychologists know and tang tang we we tell people and then the person's left wondering okay how do you self appreciate you know i am not able to self appreciate but like you said you actually concretely went and did things that made you appreciate yourself and i think that's what is the point of our conversation today that hey you don't need me a psychologist 
to tell you what to do. Of course, I can guide you and I'm there for you. But a lot of times we as human beings have certain innate qualities in us that help us sail through. You know, where no advice, nobody does. Because big problem, anyone outside of you, whether it's me as a professional, whether it's any mentors you have, will take you from A to B. But from B to Z is your journey. What do you think? Totally agree, Pragati. So <laughs> self-appreciation was one thing that, you know, changed me, has mm -hmm. helped me to be happy person. And also I've got clarity, you know, that I, because personally somewhere I was not happy professionally, however I was performing, somewhere in my, uh, you know, personal life, I wasn't that happy. So somewhere that clarity, the mission that you need in your personal life was missing. And that mission, the biggest mission, if you have children, is your kids. When you have brought them into, you know, your life on this earth. Now, as a human being, they are your responsibility that you have to grow them, you know, as happy, kind and human and you have to at the end of the day be you know make them capable right so that was actually missing out so after gaining self-happiness i became you know a responsible parent also i was able to prioritize that this is a duty this is a duty that i have to you know, along with my professional duties, even this is the one that I have to carry out, which was somewhere, you know, taking a back seat because of my unhappy self, because of my unhappy self. So just bringing money to the family is not enough. You have to bring your happy self to the family, right? So yes, Pragati, so as you said that, yes, I have to take it from B to Z. And I am a more aware person today, mm -hmm. more aware and a strong person and who is ready to, you know, take up all the battles of life. I think that's so, so wonderful. It's just been amazing talking to you. So if you had to look back on your life and describe yourself, would you pick up one word and why? So one word uh, about me would be maybe a fighter mm -hmm. who, you know, has never given up. Mm -hmm. So I have not given up at um, any point of time. Whenever I have seen the extreme lows also of my life, mm -hmm. maybe I am... The phoenix. <laughs> I have collected myself from the ashes many a times, Pragati. From the, even in my personal life and even in professional life also. Even while I was a student and, you know, when I just told you that in my 12th class, it was the lowest of my life. Uh, till then, I was a bright student who had, uh, you know, admiration, appreciation, cheer from everyone, and I lost myself then. Mm -hmm. So I think a phoenix would be a good word. I love that. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure chatting with you and all the very best. Thank you so much, Pragati, for having me here. Thanks a lot. My pleasure.